drafted that. Paul, Palermo, yes. Festerson, Here. Harding, Here. Jerem, Mr. President. Here. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing today for our invocation by Council Member Amy Melton. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thanks. I just want to take a few minutes uh, just to take, say a quick prayer for all of our children that are going back to school this week, some next week, and for those parents who are in my boat who are sending your kids off to their first year of college, a uh, special prayer for, um, for all of you and for them um, that hopefully they take what we've taught them and <laughs> use it wisely when they go, and a special prayer for all of those who are sending your children away to serve us in the in the armed forces at, at this time of year. So I want to remind everybody, school has started. Please mind the buses, mind the stop signs, don't go around them, and watch your speed so we can keep kids alive. Make sure you drive under 25. So thank you. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Omaha City Council. Council, thank you all for being with us today. As a courtesy to those in attendance, we would ask you to mute or turn off any of your electronic devices. Um, as a matter of course, if, if, if uh, my colleagues on the council uh, have no objection, I would like to bring up uh, item number 79, uh, which is on the supplemental agenda, and uh, have the public hearing on that and get that taken care of right away sure. no objections no thank you sir we'll bring it uh, madam clerk if we would sure item 79 a resolution to approve the cooperative agreement with the u.s department of housing and urban development in the amount of eighty four thousand two hundred dollars for reimbursement of administrative costs and the processing of housing discrimination complaints from october 1st 2018 to september 30th 2019 public hearing on agenda item number 79 is today proponents please Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Moved and seconded to approve item 79, roll call. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Harding? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 79 is approved, six to zero. Okay. Madam Clerk, let's start with the beginning of the agenda. Okay, number, or item six, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Pacific Reserve along with a waiver of section 53-84D lot frontage located at 20601 Pacific Street, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number six is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the council. My name is Mark Johnson. My address is 11440 West Center Road. I'm appearing today on behalf of the applicant, uh, Pacific Reserve LLC, and we're here today to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved and seconded to approve item seven. There are no further lights. Roll call. Item six. I'm six, I'm sorry. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item six is approved, six to zero. Item seven, a resolution to approve a special use permit application submitted by Rick Bergholtz to allow daycare services in an R4 single family residential district high density located northeast of 178th Street and Poppleton Avenue. Planning board and planning department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number seven is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved and seconded to approve item seven. No lights, roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Festerson? Yes. Harding? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 7 is approved, 6 to 0. Item 8, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for Blackstone Seafood, LLC, doing business as Butterfish, located at 3901 Farnham Street. Public hearing on agenda item number 8 is today. Proponents, please. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the Council. My name is Sean Kelly, 2804 South 87th Avenue. Appearing today on behalf of the applicant, we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? 
Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Approved. Moved and seconded to approve item eight. No lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item eight is approved six to zero. Item 9, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for New Sydney LLC doing business as the Sydney, located at 5918 Maple Street. Public hearing on agenda item number 9 is today. Performance, please. Hi, my name is Jim Johnson, uh, 345 South 70th Avenue, here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Oh, okay. I don't know if I'm going to let you talk. You know, you can talk. Go ahead, Mr. Festus. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, I support the application and would move to approve, but I just want to also recognize Mr. Johnson for his investments in Benson. He's one of the original entrepreneurs there and owns a lot of property there, and all of which is doing really well and operated very well. And this is a uh, uh, current bar, but uh, with new ownership uh, under his guidance, so I know it'll go well. And just recently renovated the Bank of Benson, too, which I understand was packed over the weekend. So um, appreciate all you're doing in the neighborhood there. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 9. Uh, there are no further lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 9 is approved 6 to 0. Thank you. Item 10, an application to consider an addition to the Barry and Rye LLC doing business as the Barry and Rye to their Class CK liquor license located at 1105 Howard Street to add approximately 60 feet by 80 feet to the second floor area. Public hearing agenda item number 10 is today. Proponents, please. Hi, my name is Ethan Bondelid. I reside at 6810 Underwood Avenue. Um, I'm here to answer any questions. I'm the owner of the Barry and Rye. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Second, uh, no lights, roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 10 is approved, 6 to 0. Items 11 and 12 can be considered together. Special designated liquor license applications for North Omaha Loves Jazz Cultural Arts and Humanities Complex, Inc. for events located at Loves Jazz and Arts Center located at 2510 North 24th Street on August 31st, 2018 and September 2nd, 2018 from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. with music until 1 a.m. each day. Public hearing agenda items numbers 11 and 12 are, are today. Uh, proponents, please. Good afternoon. I'm Harry Washington. Uh, address is 1921 North 31st Street. Here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Um, Mr. Washington, if we could, uh, I just have one, one question. Sure. Just if you could outline for this council, because I think it's an exci exciting thing you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, just if you could outline it just a little bit for us, because it's a fundraiser for Yeah. And, and uh, well, on the 31st, it'll be a concert, a live concert outside in the uh, parking lot behind our building. And, and, and well, there's two purposes. One, to uh, create money for Native Omaha Year, which is next year, and to uh, bring re revenue and commerce to the 24th Street Corridor. And then also on Sunday, there'll be a comedy show with, I think, about eight comedians and kind of the same thing. It's all for the same purpose. Yeah. And I'm not one of the comedians, by the way, so just <laughs> I just wanted you to have an opportunity to, to talk about it because yes. I think it's a good effort. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, there are no for, um, there, uh, public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Second. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Items Thank 11 you. and 12 are approved 6 to 0. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the City Council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed, unless otherwise provided by the City Council rules of order. Okay, the public hearing on agenda items numbers 13 through 31 were held on August 7th, uh, 2018. I, my understanding is we're going to take uh, all of the uh, annexation items off of the agenda? Yes, it'd be and 16 to 28. So it'd be 13 to 15 and, and then are I we taking off 29 as 29 well? 29 as well. Okay, so and 13 to 15, um, 
and 30 and 30 30 and 31 yep that's where we're that's the agenda items that were that are part of the consent agenda package is there a motion motion approved item 13 through 15 and 30 and 31 second. moved and seconded to approve 13 through 15 30 and 31 there are no lights roll call melton yes. paul's yes. palermo yes. festerson yes. harding yes. mr president yes motion passed six to zero Item 16, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Cherry Ridge, SID 380, located northwest of 108th Street, Military Road. The public hearing was held. Is there a motion? Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 16. There are no lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 16 is approved, 6 to 0. Item 17, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Cinnamon Creek and adjacent SID 392, located southeast of 180th Street and Q Street. Public hearing was held. Is there a motion? Moved and seconded to approve item 17. No lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. No. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 17 is approved. Five to one. Item 18, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Weston Hills, Weston Hills West, and adjacent SID 415, located southwest of 144th Street and 4th Street. Public hearing, uh, the public hearing has been held. Is there a motion for number 18? Yes. Moved and seconded to approve item 18. No lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. No. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 18 is approved. Five to one. Item 19, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Quail Hollow and adjacent SID 437, located southeast of 165th Street and Q Street. Well, number 19, the, uh, the public hearing has been held. Is there a motion? Second. second. Moved and seconded to approve item 19. Low lights, roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. No. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 19 is approved, five to one. Item 20, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to West Bay Woods and adjacent SID 439, located northwest of 180th Street and F Street. Public hearing agenda item number 20 was held. Is there a motion? Yes. Moved and seconded to approve item 20. No lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. No. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 20 is approved. Five to one. Item 21, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Lake Cunningham Ridge, SID 445, located northwest of 75th Street and I-680. Public hearing agenda item number 21 has been held. Is there a motion? Yes. Moved and seconded to approve 21. No lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 21 is approved 6 to 0. Item 22, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Bay Ridge, West Bay Woods 2 and adjacent, SID 463, generally located southeast of 192nd Street and Spring Street. A is an amendment of the whole requested by the law department. B is communication received from the mayor's office. And C is communication received from property owner Dave Kieber. Public hearing on item 22 has been held. Is there a motion? Oh, first of all, there's a light. Ms. Ms. Melton. Oh, yes. I, well, just before, I know we took public hearing, and I, you know, Mr. Kieber came down, um, exchanged many emails with him, and he made some excellent arguments uh, in regards to his property. And we did receive, after the meeting, uh, notification that his property was approved for Greenbelt by the, the county um, the morning before our, our public hearing. And I guess my concern today is that we're, we're going to be treating two different Greenbelt owners differently um, at least if everything we do I think that the city should be fair in what they do and should do the same to everybody and treat everybody fairly I understand that there may be some argument about well who when did each person get it and, and that kind of thing but I, I think the fact that both of them have the green belt status we should treat both of them fairly and then then you have to go well then do I annex both of them or do I or do I do I annex all the properties <laughs> Or do I not annex all the properties? And that becomes even more problematic um, because we have an, an SID, which was meant to be annexed, and we have the adjacent land, which is what we've always done in the past. So I guess I've, what I, I've really struggled with this particular 
um, agenda item, this particular annexation, for the reason that I don't want to ever see somebody's taxes go up to the extent that they aren't able to pay them. So when you go from green belt to not having green belt, that could be very difficult um, for a family to face. On the other hand, if you live um, on the outskirts of the city limits and you're in adjacent land, and that's how we've always done our annexations, where we do the SID and the adjacent land, it would be difficult for me to go back now and set a new precedent and set something different than what we've always done before. Uh, so I have to say that they, all the way up to right now, um, I've struggled with whether to take all seven properties out or leave all seven in. I don't think we should treat anybody differently. Or you could remove two of the seven properties. But again, that's inconsistent with annexation completely um, to pick two properties and, and not the adjacent area around it. So um, I just wanted to let um, Mr. Kieber know that I really did consider all of his arguments and, and I thought he made good arguments. I also am very concerned with the amount of, I, I think, Greenbelt property that we have all over the county. So if we're gonna make a stance that we're not gonna annex Greenbelt property at this point in time, then I think the growth of Omaha will stop uh, from what it looks like. And we can't we can't do that either. So with that, I thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Harding. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I too uh, have had some issue um, getting to a conclusion on, on this item. I think uh, Mr. Kiewer uh, and his uh, neighbors um, sent some compelling arguments, but I think um, with with the way that the city has annexed and proposed annexation packages in the past, um, which have included both adjacent areas to SIDs as well as green belt properties, uh, we have taken those in, and um, and, and I think to um, to to have the tail wagging the dog in the sense that if you if, if we didn't take in the five properties other than the two that have green belt uh, status in, in this um, circumstance, if we if we did if we took that position, we would essentially be giving a um, putting those in adjacent areas on notification that um, at some point in the future we're going to annex you rather than being able to take them in now with the S the adjacent SID. And I, I, I fear that that would then limit the ability then to take in the SID um, based upon that reasoning. I will uh, I agree with uh, Council Member Melton that if if we are to treat um, one with greenbelt status differently than someone else with greenbelt status, I would have a problem with that, uh, regardless of when it was awarded or how much difference in taxes that might make. Um, I, I don't think those two reasons are an issue to make a, a distinction. And so I, I think we should treat them um, equally. But in this case, um, even with, with the good um, arguments that were made uh, by the property owners, I will be supporting um, annexation of all seven of the properties. Thank you. Um, there are no further lights. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Um, there are no further lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 22 is approved, 6 to 0. Item 23, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to West Village Point, Village Cove, SID 483, located southeast of 180th Street and West Dodge Road. Public hearing agenda item number 23 has been held. Is there a motion? Moved and seconded to approve item 23. No lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 23 is approved. Six to zero. Item 24, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to West Dodge Station, SAD 487, located northwest of 180th Street and West Dodge Road. Public hearing was held. Is there a motion? Second. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 24 is approved, 6 to 0. Item 25, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Manchester Park and adjacent SID 493, located southwest of 168th Street and Locust Street. 
Public hearing on 25 has been held. Is there a motion? Second. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. No. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 25 is approved. Five to one. Item 26, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Pacific Point Estate and adjacent SID 498, located northwest of 192nd Street and Shadow Ridge Drive. Public hearing agenda item number 26 was held. Is there a motion? Second. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 26 is approved. Six to zero. Item 27, an ordinance to annex to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Pacific Woods and adjacent SID 500, located northeast of 204th Street and Pacific Street. Public hearing agenda item number 27 was held. Is there a motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve item 27. No lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. No. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 27 is approved. Five to one. Item 28, an ordinance to annex and, and to extend the limits of the City of Omaha to Miracle Hills Golf Course and adjacent, located southeast of 120 Street and Blondo Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval and B is communication received from the Mayor's Office. Uh, their public hearing was held. Uh, Mr. Hardy. Thanks, Mr. President. I just wanted to say a couple words on this. Um, I know we've had the public hearing, but I think it's important uh, on uh, this property to note that uh, there's little if no expense to the city to keep this out of the package. What it would um, what would happen if it were taken into the city is we'd take away the ability to use the SID tool uh, for development and with the amount of public improvements that would be um, anticipated that would go along with a, a development that would uh, get this to its highest and best use, I just don't think it's prudent to take away that tool, so I will be voting to take this out of the package, and I'll make a motion to do so. I'll uh, second that motion. Um, it's been moved and seconded to take this one out of the out of the package. Uh, Ms. Melton. I, I, Council Member Harding actually just stated the, exactly what um, okay. I was going to say. I think it'll eliminate the ability to develop this property with SID funding, and it does sit in my district. Um, so that, that would be the reason, no, that's all right, and that would be the reason that I would take that out. I've got some other deteriorating, we've got some other deteriorating areas just around uh, Miracle Hills. I know we've got the rush market in there, but it's on, I, you know, a temporary, it's kind of a temporary basis. There's a Boston market that sits right down the street that was I, almost condemned is what it looks like with the stickers on, on the windows. So I worry that we're starting to get, uh, that we're, we're getting an area of town that's starting to go down. We're not getting the redevelopment to take that tool away right next door, which could encourage the development right there in, in that particular area uh, on 114th would be very concerning to me. Uh, and so I, I do want to encourage hopefully development in that area. And I know it can be difficult. We've been trying to develop crossroads for, for many, <laughs> many years and, and hopefully that will get done at, at some point. Um, but I just don't want to take that away because I think that'll ensure that we won't have development at all. Uh, so thank you very much, Council okay. Member Hardy. I second that. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to take this out of the package, so an affirmative vote would be to take this out of the package. Am I correct? Correct. And just to clarify, essentially it would be a motion to deny okay. item 28. So it would be a motion to deny item 28. Okay. Council Member Melt. It's been moved and seconded to deny item 28. There are no further lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 6 to 0. Item 29, an ordinance to insert Article 14 into Chapter 10 of the Omaha Municipal Code concerning lift assist cost recovery to allow the city to charge a fee to assisted living facilities and nursing care facilities when the Omaha Fire Department provides a lift assist to any person and to establish an initial fee of $400 per lift assist. Public, on the, public hearing on this one was held as well. I understand there's a motion. Are we going to make a motion to lay over? Moved and seconded to lay over item 29 for four weeks. No lights. Roll call. And just to clarify, that would be the September 11th September meeting. September 11th meeting. Okay. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 6 to 0. Thank you, Chief, for being here anyway. Thank you. Uh, the public hearing on agenda items numbers 32 through 37 are today. 
<clears throat> if you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Second. Motion to approve items uh, 32 through 37. No lights, roll call. Uh, I believe a council member wanted to pull. I'm sorry. 33? Okay. Was your light on? Did I? No, I thought we had talked about it before. Oh, okay. So I'm I sorry. apologize for that. Okay, that's all right. Uh, so we're voting on 32. 32 and then 34 through 37. Moved and seconded. There are no further lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 33. No lights. Roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Melton. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 33 is approved five to one. Item 38, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 41511 concerning sewer use fees for the period January 1, 2019 through December 31st, 2023 to provide for an amended effective date of January 1, 2019 and to readopt the amendments to Omaha Municipal Code as set forth in ordinance number 41511. Public hearing agenda item number 38 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 30. Oh. I'm sorry. Mr. Pauls. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, earlier this morning, I had one of my constituents call me and said, Rich, you're always talking about uh, saving me money on property tax, but you're continually upping all my other fees. So I told him I would talk a little bit about it today, so if I can see if he can understand why we're doing it. Uh, I need to have somebody from uh, uh, Bob. Stevie? Yes. Uh, on page eight of the uh, of this particular ordinance, I'm looking at the figures, and I'm looking at 2019. <clears throat> the monthly figure will be 35.28. I don't I don't know if you have access to that or not. I'm, I'm just looking at the residential. I just told him I would talk about uh, the homeowner. Okay. Okay. As I look at number one, the homeowner, in 2019, it's going to be 3528. That is correct. Okay. And uh, then as you move all the way for five years from then, it will be 4329. That is correct. And I told him these prices are going up, uh, but he, he still had some issues. But he said, well, Rich, you're not taking, and he started analyzing, and he's had me start looking at some of the things. He said, well, what about uh, on page 9, the B part of that, the flow charge? Yes. And uh, ex explain, uh, I, don't, I do not have the answer, and I'm, I'm assuming, uh, well, I, I know you do, but uh, it's 3.09 for 100 cubic feet. What does that mean? Yeah, so the Bob Stubbe Public Works. So the, the sewer use fee is based off of two components. One is a fixed charge and one is a usage charge. And so the, the page nine that you're talking about, the flow charge, is right. essentially based on the amount of water that an individual would use, and therefore it's based on 100 cubic feet. And so traditionally in the past, uh, there, we've always nominally said it's about 7 CCF, uh, based on uh, low flow, flow usage of, of current fixtures, that, that number is kind of going down. So once again, the more water you use, the higher that cost will be for that individual. And, and I know this is off top here. Do you have any idea what the average homeowner in uh, the city uses? I mean, do we use 200 cubic feet less than that? No, again, uh, it used to be set up more like seven CCF, and I believe now that, again, because of low flow usage of, of fixtures, it's going down somewhere in the neighborhood of five. Oh, okay. Okay, and uh, then again, he pointed out to me that it starts out now at 3.09, and in five years, it's 3.79. Uh, 
Uh, he, he's just indicating to me these things are going up and he wants to know what we can do about it. Okay, then, now I'm jumping to uh, page 10 and now it says additional customer charges. And as I go down the page, on, uh, item 20, that additional for 219 will be 80 cents a month. Now what is, what is this additional charge? That is essentially uh, the city of Omaha is required to comply with what's called a national um, um, uh, pollution discharge elimination system. And so it's a federal requirement that we comply with, with stormwater issues. And so that's essentially a charge that is applied for our staff to actually make sure that we are in compliance uh, with the uh, federal requirements and it also provides funding for us to address issues associated with stormwater facilities that uh, that need uh, maintenance. Okay. Again, at 219 it starts at 80 cents and 223 you'll be almost 19 uh, well 18 cents more. That he's just pointing out to me. He said, "He said we're nickeling, and diming them to death." And uh, I know with our up new change in our dealing with our waste, we're going to be upping. Uh, uh, so, but he says, "Quit bragging about that you're reducing taxes, Pauls, when you're actually increasing all my other fees that takes away from that." And he pointed out to me in 2014, because uh, he read this better than I did, he was being charged $23 a month, basically in 2014 plus all the additional things and uh, so I can see where they're they have the feeling that uh, we're just increasing these charges to them but now I'm going to ask you to, uh, to sort of explain why we are doing this this money is not coming to us and we're putting in the uh, city coffers is what 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 uh, is most of this money being spent for so there's a couple things. One is is that the, the city of Omaha is under what's called a federal mandate to address combined sewer overflows. And so there's, there's areas within the Omaha community where when we get a rain event, such as today, uh, there is a potential and highly potential for uh, waste, sanitary waste, to be discharged into two receiving streams. One is the Missouri River and the other is, is the Papillion Creek. And so there, we are under a consent decree uh, with the state of Nebraska, with EPA, to essentially um, comply with the long-term control plan that was developed back in, or approved back in early 2010. And so the city of Omaha has a number of projects within that uh, long-term control plan to address those discharges to those receiving streams. And we do that a number of different ways. One is we do it by sewer separation. And so obviously uh, we don't want that sewage to be backed up into people's basements. And so we go in and, and put a larger sewer in, and then we have a separate sewer in those particular locations. We also have increased the capacity of the Missouri River Treatment Facility to allow for additional wet weather flows to be flowing to uh, the Missouri River. And so we treat it prior to it going into the Missouri River. And then another way to control it is essentially through what we call a rapid rate treatment system or retent retention treatment basin. And so Saddle Creek is one of the locations where we're proposing to, uh, to address that particular issue. The other thing is, is just a long-term operation and maintenance of the uh, collection system. So we have currently three wastewater treatment facilities and all of the collection system that has to be maintained. And so that particular charge is to address really those two things. Okay, so uh, and I'm just I'm just trying to be as honest with this person as possible. So in 2023, the basic uh, with the, the two uh, charges, his or her bill would be forty-four dollars plus, and that doesn't include the uh, uh, flow charge. Would that be correct? That is correct. Yeah, and so typically what we do is that we use an outside. Uh, consultant to help us develop uh, essentially a rate model and that rate model has a number of different um, assumptions in it whether it's uh, cost of inflation whether it's the cost of money that we need to borrow in order to be able to fund some of those large capital improvement projects it talks about debt service and so we work with finance and I think there's 20 to 25 different assumptions that make up that rate model that we use 
And so we anticipated, I think back in 2013, that we potentially would be seeing uh, rates somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 to 9 percent increase. And obviously because of a number of things, one is the, uh, the lower cost of funding some of the grants that we've received. Uh, this particular increase that is in front of you today uh, is about five and a quarter percent. So it's less than what we had originally anticipated back in, in 2013. The other thing is, is that we've received some uh, relief from the state of Nebraska that allows us to extend our program out a little bit. So what we can do is take a look at some of the projects that we've already done, uh, recognize uh, the uh, water quality improvements that are uh, available to us because of those projects. And we've, uh, in actuality, have eliminated some projects from our long-term term control plan, and therefore we don't have to expend those capital dollars for those particular projects. Okay. Now, I know most uh, the sewer comes from all over the city, but what part of the city are we really spending a lot of these uh, monies in to improve the system? Well, again, the Missouri River Treatment Plan is, is a location that's about 10th and uh, Missouri Avenue. Uh, there's been a significant amount of money. It has been expended down there to, again, to uh, increase the amount of flow that is able to be treated that that particular facility. Uh, the combined sewer area is essentially east of uh, 72nd Street, and so if you're doing sewer separation, and then, as I mentioned, with the uh, Saddle Creek area that drains into the Missouri, or excuse me, the Papillion Creek, uh, that particular facility would be installed just directly to the south of the, the UNO's Baxter Arena. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're that. welcome. Uh, okay. Ms. Melton. Yeah. Councilman, Paul's just brought or, or asked a question that I wanted to answer. I know he knows the answer to it, but. Um, what can we do to help with these fees? Last year, we put in our legislative package um, a bill to request some relief back, basically asking that at least if we could receive the taxes that we're paying, because our, our residents actually get taxed on these fees. Um, and so it's, a, it's somewhat of a windfall for the state. What I would like to see is that we could get in all communities, not just the city of Omaha, because as I think Councilman Pauls knows if you just ask for us, the answer will be no, right? It'll have to be something that benefits everybody. But everybody in the state of Nebraska is facing at least some water infrastructure issues. It may not be the federal mandate that we have here in Omaha. It may not be as big as what we have here in Omaha. But everybody is facing that around the state. So I think there is some legislation. I'm going to ask that that legislation be proposed again. Currently still working with, uh, I know Senator Lindstrom um, kind of led it last year and he's willing to do so again we may be able to tweak this work with other cities work with um, the league of cities and and others and i know lincoln was interested in it we had people from sarpy county uh, from the city of papillion actually came down and testified uh, in front of the committee last year so there is something that, that we can do to at least maybe capture some of those fees back to keep our costs down i appreciate the fact that our city has worked very hard in finding ways to keep the cost down, uh, maybe eliminate some of the projects that they thought they were going to need to do. So I say, well, we've reduced the increase, but that is a good thing. We thought we were, in 2013, when I first came on council, I was being told there'd be an eight to nine percent increase. To see that we're at five and a half now, I would like to see moving forward um, as this project goes forward, hopefully we can get that down even further. And then we can start decreasing those fees as projects are done and we start to get um, the money, hopefully we can get some of that money back from the state and that windfall. So there are things that I think we can continue to do. I appreciate the fact the city is doing it in public works, but those are things that we can keep our eye on and ask those in Lincoln to help us with too. Thank you. Um, Mr. Palermo. Thank you, Question be for uh, Mr. Stubbe as well. Uh, as we talk about this federally mandated uh, sewer separation we talk about all the extra costs i know i hear a lot from my constituents that are uh, either financially challenged or maybe on a fixed income i do believe uh, we have something set up uh, for relief could you uh, talk about that for real briefly yes bob stubby public works we do have what's called a, a rate assistance program and so uh, the, there's monies available for um, individuals that have a hardship with regard to paying their utility bill. Obviously, 
the sewer fee is included in the MUD bill that goes out for water, gas, and sewer. And so um, if the individual believes that they are hardship for paying that particular bill, um, they can make application uh, through what's called the LIHE program. And uh, the city does have funding available to assist in those particular cases where uh, it's determined that that particular um, uh, citizen has a hardship to pay that bill. Thank you very much. That's good information for uh, those people to be aware of. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and let me let me add one item, uh, um, one measure to the discussion that we're talking about today, and that's what Ms. Melton. I think you're right. Um, and in terms of, we need to uh, spon get a sponsor for us to address the concerns that we have about you know these costs that Councilmember Paul's raised adequately. I think. And uh, th the thing I wanted to add is that. In September, I think it's September, the League of Nebraska League of Municipalities meets. Uh, I've already scheduled that I'm going to go, so, you know, for those two days. And uh, we do have a little bit of a travel budget, everybody, so I, wouldn't li I would like to not go by myself. So, uh, but I, I, my intention on going is to begin discussions along this line uh, as well as talk about tax policy and how we address tax policy. Those, so those, those would be two of the main items the sewer separation fee and tax policy is one of the things that I would like to talk about with our colleagues in outstate, outstate Nebraska. So I would encourage us to go to that if we could. Um, uh, we have a little bit of a travel budget to do it if we, if we want to make that trip. So, uh, but I think it would be worth it for at least more than one of us to go, but I'm definitely going to go. Mr. Pauls. Yeah, I, I just want to, because I have the history, and we have to approach this on a nonpartisan, because when I was down there, Tom White, had this same thing for it and it almost went over, but it became a partisan issue. We've got to fight that. And even Mello, Keith Mello had something similar to it. It, it. We have to approach this as a body who wants something better for Nebraska, not as a two-party system. And that's what messed it up in the, when I was down there. And that's why I think, We've Mr. Got Pauls, to get away from Mr. Pauls, that's why I think we need to go down and, and, and commiserate and work with our, our uh, counterparts in the, other, in the rest of the state. Uh, Mr. Mr. Festerson. Uh, Mr. Stubbe, this item was approved over a month ago, right? The, the only reason why this is back on the agenda is to amend the start date to January 2019. Uh, Bob Stubbe, Public Works. That's correct, yeah. The, this was approved previously. Um, inadvertently, the date that went into effect uh, was wrong, and so essentially this is correcting it. Our current rates go through... Uh, 2018, and so this would go into effect of January 2019. And that's the only change? Yeah. Correct. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, no further lights, next item. Item 39, an ordinance to amend section 34-332 of the Omaha Municipal Code to clarify property owners' responsibility for snow removal from sidewalks along the rear of lots. Public hearing agenda item number 39 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 40, an ordinance to approve the fiscal year 2017 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant JAG program award in the amount of $380,836 during the project period extending from October 1, 2016 to September 30th, 2020 to provide funding for various law enforcement programs. Public hearing agenda item number 40 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Mr. Festus. Oh, I didn't cancel. I'm sorry. Uh, next item. Non-action items, items 41 through 77, do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on the agenda for consideration. Is there a motion to go uh, into a closed session to protect the public interest to only discuss labor negotiations? Moved. Moved and seconded to go into executive session. There are no lights. Roll call. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Harding? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Motion passed 6 to 0. And for the public, um, I'll state uh, for the record that the purpose of this closed session is to only discuss labor negotiations.
to adjourn from closed session. Roll call. Oh, oh you just need a motion to adjourn. Oh, you just need a motion yeah. to adjourn. Well, I think we need this a is a, to yeah, this is the motion to adjourn from closed session. Yeah. Don't we have to have a motion to come out of executive session? Yeah, this is it. Okay. Yeah. And then, then the motion to adjourn. Correct. Or is that all? Okay. Yep. Motion to come, somebody need a motion to come out of executive session. Motion to come out of executive session. <laughs> Second, roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion. And I will restate for the record, the only topic discussed in executive session was labor negotiations. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second, roll call. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Meeting is adjourned at three oh eight.